Dear future husband, I am officially 18, officially an adult. I feel super cool. I got a tattoo, I've decided on a college. It's hours away from home, but that's okay. I'll be okay. You know what? I bet we meet in college. Or I guess maybe I hope we meet in college. Hi, I'm Bailey with She Said Yes, a podcast all about getting married. And today I can hardly contain myself because on this episode, we finally get to go dress shopping. We're going to get into some of the finer details of how to shop for a dress and talk to some experts about the new trends and what makes a good wedding dress shopping experience. And hopefully we'll find the dress. We'll also be sitting down with the dry cleaners to learn how to care for our beautiful new dresses. But before we do any of that, we have a very special guest who has agreed to let us use her gorgeous venue space for a very special event. We've got a lot to cover today, so stick around. Dear future husband, I love you. And don't worry, I'll say yes. She Said Yes is presented by White of Dublin. To learn more about how they make your wedding dress experience comfortable, personal, and all about you, visit whitebridalboutiques.com. How did you go about deciding this is kind of what we want the structure to look like? This is kind of what the vision was. I had a vision of the type of barn I wanted. So I just sketched it. And trust me, it looked like stickman. <laughs> it was, not, I'm not an artist. <laughs> I know on our last episode, we talked a lot about venues and how to book one, but today we have a very special guest to hear from. And we reached out to this family and they came out to the property and said, do you have any pictures or anything? And I handed him my sketch and he said, I, I think I can build that. This is Kim, owner and operator of Lane 57 Event Center, a beautiful wedding venue in New Albany, just northeast of Columbus. Kim and her husband, Perry, have been opening their family farm turned wedding venue to couples all around the state for five years. And it has been a joy of hers to watch couples become personal friends since they've opened. With a hand-built barn, wraparound patio, and an on-site honeymoon suite, Lane 57 Event Center is a simple yet luxurious wedding wedding venue perfect for the occasion. It was also the site of our very first She Said Yes bridal show on April 27th of 2024. Not only are you like going to be the star of She Said Yes the bridal show because we get to host it at your a beautiful venue, you also just have an incredible story. So Kim, thank you so much for coming on She Said Yes the podcast. I cannot wait to like dive into your amazing story. Well, I'd like to thank you, Bailey, for <laughs> inviting me to be a part of uh, the podcast. And I'm honored that you even considered or even thought to come out to Lane 57 and um, have your first mm -hmm. annual event out on the farm. Kim graciously let us use her event space to welcome dozens of new brides looking for vendors and services for their very own wedding. So, of course, we had to get her on the show to give us some of the behind the scenes of just how her beautiful property came to be. Let's first talk about where did you get this idea to say, you know what, I'm going to create a wedding venue. Where did that spark from? I worked for the government and my husband finally said, you know what, it's time to retire. And the first words out of his mouth is, let's do something on the farm, but not farm like tomatoes. <laughs> and I said, totally, I already know what I want to do. I said, I believe my calling is a venue. And my husband sort of looked at me a little strange and says, this is an old farm. Nobody's going to want to come out to this old farm. I said, just give me a year. There Let's you go. see what happens. So I did a temporary setup. I sold out and took that money, found an Amish family, and they came out and built the barn. And we've been sold out since. How long have you been doing this wedding venue? So we're going into our fifth year. Wow. First year, we planted lavender. Ooh. And then that first season in the fall was COVID. Oh. And I thought, well, I have time now to plant sunflowers. So I started <laughs> a sunflower patch. So, and this year we're going to do wildflowers. That's so, so fun. Yeah, I'm pretty excited. 
The pictures of this place, I promise, do not do it justice. The sprawling lavender fields, the tall sunflowers create truly a perfect backdrop for the wedding of any season. And that's exactly what Kim wanted. It's like an open canvas, like a blank canvas that we can create together. It's letting them create something that they'll remember forever. Mm. To make sure that couples enjoy the blank canvas feeling, Lane 57 has plenty of decor available. And the best part, it's all completely free to use. I think a lot of brides, they'll get on Pinterest and they'll start finding all these beautiful setups. Then they realize that it starts adding up. So before the venue opened, I gradually bought certain things that were important. Mm. The linens, the lanterns, the candles. Wow. Everything is high end. And the nice part about it, I can honestly go back in my going on my fifth year that we've only had two weddings that they brought in their own belongings only because they didn't realize that all of that was free. That's incredible. And I've even offered, if it's something that I can continue to use, I'll go to Michael's, I'll go to wow. Hobby Lobby and I'll pick it up because I know I'll use it again. Not only does Kim want to make sure the couples have all the space and decorations they need, she also wants to ensure that they have all the time they need too. A lot of venues will charge extra to set up early or they will have a super strict requirements on what time the event has to be over, but not at Lane 57. That whole day is their day. Yeah. And they can relax. Aw. We're not a, okay, get here at yep. 6 and you've got to be out by 10. Yeah. We do weddings Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But if that Friday is open, they basically have the week. That's amazing. They can come in, they can decorate, they can bring all their items. On Friday, if they have a Saturday wedding, they can do the rehearsal. Mm. So if I don't have a Sunday wedding and I just that weekend has a Saturday, they can sleep in. Kim truly cares about her couple, even down to what they eat at the reception. She has dropped a handful of tips about caters that I never even would have thought of before. So many restaurants that are catering after 2020, um, after COVID, a lot of restaurants went into, and it's separate from the restaurant, so the food is different yeah. than the restaurant food. So I learned that really quick to where, well, the couples have to give us a meal. Mm -hmm. That's part of the contract. <laughs> and that is my time to test the food, yep. see if it's worthy of getting on the list because it represents Lane 57. Kim is very particular about her preferred vendor list, which you get for free if you book with them, by, by the way, but that she has personally vetted each one of them invited by her couples. Her commitment to making sure her guests have everything they need extends beyond just what they need to make the day special. She makes sure that they have full access to the property to make sure their day is as stress-free as possible. And it shows how she continues to have a relationship with her couples even after the wedding. Every couple, I am still on, they're still on my Instagram. They Aww. still have my personal email. I have about five or six that now are either on their first or their second child. Aww. And they consider um, me as family or wow. myself and my husband. Uh, we get invited like to their baby showers Aww. and they brought the babies out. Um, yeah, I, I think we become friends. Yeah. It wasn't just a transaction. Mm -hmm. We have had couples come back for their first anniversary, Aww. just to have a toast and a private dance in the barn. And that tells me how much they cared yeah. enough about how they were treated. Mm. And it wasn't just about being a commercial business. There's more emotional feelings connected. There's a reason Kim's couples come back to visit and keep in touch with her after the wedding. To Kim, it's more than just a business. I always tell the couples, Save a bottle of wine. At the Aww. end of the evening, start the fire pit. Sit with your parents or your best friends and just chill. And they might be out there till one o'clock in the morning, but they're now reminiscing. Yeah. This, all this planning and just Ugh. just makes it makes the, the evening perfect for them. Mm -hmm. And then they don't have to go off the property. That is absolutely beautiful. 
Kim, thank you so much for sharing, like truly sharing your heart with us. If a couple is like, yes, I want to get married there, or they even want to tour the beautiful farm, even though the pictures will not do it justice, where can they find you? What, do you have a good website or what's the best way to get in contact with you? We have a website, lane57.com. And on that website, they can see a lot of the pictures, but there is a schedule on there um, for booking a tour. Mm. Uh, They can get on there. They can book a tour. They can also call directly. My phone number is on there and they can call me directly. Uh, Also, we have Instagram and Facebook. So it's Lane 57 Event Venues. I'm there all the time, so. Even though Matt and I have already cited our our venue, we are thrilled that Kim allowed us to use her space for the bridal show. It is truly something special. I just said to the Lord, okay, now what is my purpose? Mm. You know, my careers are pretty much over. Um, What is it? What is my purpose in life, God? This is it. Kim, thank you so much for lending us your beautiful space. It truly means so much to be able to be in such a beautiful place where so many couples get to take that next step and fall in love. Thank you for joining us today. Now that we've covered our venue, we've got a plan in order. We're ready to start inviting guests. We can start looking at some of the special details of that day. And what's more important than the wedding dress? We buy our stock. We know it well. We know all of our designers really well, too, and we have wonderful relationships with them. Our next guests are Heather and Miranda from White of Dublin. Not only are they the title sponsor of this show, they are also some of the best in the business when it comes to beautiful wedding dresses right here in central Ohio. I've been in the industry for about 10 years, um, so I've seen it. I've seen it all and I've done it all. I know my stock and I know what will look best on you. Heather's been the operator of White Bridal Boutique for 13 years, starting her first bridal shop, White of Dublin, in Dublin, Ohio, and adding their second location in Raleigh, North Carolina. Every year, they help brides from all over the state discover their perfect look at the premier showroom in beautiful downtown Dublin from their stock of designer dresses from all over the world. We deal with designers out of Barcelona, Spain, out of London, England. Yep, absolutely. So they're coming from Australia. Mm -hmm. Um, They're coming from every which direction. Miranda is Heather's business partner, and she has the privilege to work in both Raleigh and Columbus. She's the one finding the styles for each location, making sure the stock gets delivered to the right brides. She also gets to try on a lot of wedding dresses, which sounds literally like the dream job. You said you buy your stock in New York. Let's talk a little bit about that. Do you just go to this huge warehouse that just has like dresses <laughs> upon dresses upon dresses? Like, how do you find out this will work in Columbus, but this won't work or this style won't work in Columbus? How do you narrow that down? Whenever we go to market, we see the trends are forecasted. We see what's kind of coming in mm-hmm. and we know kind of a sweet spot where we want to make sure that we have certain certain trends that our brides are going to be focusing on. Um, I have the liberty as well and I work both stores. So I work in Raleigh and I also work in Dublin. Even the needs that we see from Raleigh to Dublin, they're literally night and day. The idea that some styles would work here in Columbus, but not somewhere else, was something I truly never thought of before. Miranda says that dresses in Columbus tend to be a little more on the conservative side, while in Raleigh, they tend to favor the Southern Belle look. Like right now, low backs are a thing. They they are really, really popular. Okay. Also used used to be a very, very low cut, deep V that was like really popular. Well, now that's changing. Heather and Miranda clearly have a lot of fun doing what they get to do for their brides all dolled up for their big day. So it wasn't a surprise that when they meet their brides, they want them to have fun too. They will be greeted as soon as they step off the elevator. Um, We bring them into our boutique. We make sure that everybody's comfortable and let them have a seat. Um, We do an interview process, which again, we're just verifying and just double checking information with our bride. Mm. Um, But we also like to serve champagne and mimosas just to kind of get that party really started. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, From 
there, like I said, we'll go ahead and verify some information. This is where we're setting a tone that we absolutely care about our brides. Mm. We're digging into all kinds of details for the big day, including, you know, what they want to wear, but also are they having a bridal party? What color yeah. scheme are they thinking? Just kind of getting an overall painted picture for what their vibe of their special day will look like. Um, from there, we also allow our brides to shop with us. Ooh, um, so we okay. set ourselves apart on that end um, compared to some of our other competitors in the area. Right. We also shop- have closed stock, which means that you can't touch it. You can't oh, look at it. Okay. It might be in a back room. There might be a few dresses, but we have what's called open stock. So everything is out in the open for our brides to look and to touch. That was something I really appreciated about their business model. Some bridal shops won't allow you to browse the dresses in person. Instead, they have an inventory in the back way away from the floor shop. White is different. To Miranda, the way the dresses feel is just as important as it looks. So she and Heather want the experience to be as open as possible. Um, I probably tried on an upwards of a thousand yes! dresses or more. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Love to play in the dresses. But on top of that, it's more than just playing. Mm. When I get into these dresses, I'm able to know exactly how it's constructed, how it feels, if it's comfortable, if it's mm. not. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot more goes into it than just playing. But yeah. yes, if you're just on the outside looking in, it looks like <laughs> these girls are just messing around. All that playing allows Miranda and Heather to really be creative in how they customize their dresses to the particular needs of each and every bride. I like to Frankenstein, which means potentially I'll have you in two dresses at the same time just to show you like what it can all come together. So if I have a dress that's strapless, but you wanted a sleeve, I'll put them in the sleeve gown first, put the strapless gown on top Stop, of it. Stop! Yes, no yes, way! Absolutely. Because I also have to realize that not everybody is built like me. So yes, Mm. I just see it in my mind. I know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of my girls need to actually be able to see it, to imagine it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's where I've learned to just become super creative on the sales floor. It was also really cool to hear the selection process that Heather and Miranda like to use to make sure that their brides have plenty of options to choose from. So I always like to get their opinion, their overall vibe for what they're looking for, whether that be just through verbiage or if you actually have pictures or a Pinterest board anything like that. Um, From there, I also like to pull what I would call my wild cards. So any of my brides who are listening to this right now, you're like, oh my gosh, that's Miranda. And yes, she does pull wild cards. (laughs) Wild cards has nothing to do with like, it's crazy, it's got feathers. It's just not exactly what you ask for. Mm. Again, you're trusting in me knowing that I know my stock and I know what will look best on you. Doesn't mean they have to love it. And I like to joke and let them know, you know, I didn't make this dress, so it is okay if you don't like it. (laughs) It just helps me to gear towards what exactly we're looking for. All the way from the moment that bride steps into the shop, Heather and Miranda are on her team. From the reception to the selection process, even down to customizing that perfect dress. But sometimes a bride needs a little extra support. When you walk across the elevator threshold into white, you know, you're going to know you're meeting a friend. Mm -hmm. And we want you to trust us because the advice we're going to give you is going to be honest And honestly, if a bride walks out and she loves a dress, but it looks really bad on her, we're going to tell her. Oh, good. Okay, that was going to be my next question. I'll tell you why, Bailey. It's because our reputation walks down the aisle with With her. her. Mm. Yeah. So if people are not ooing and aahing in a really good way, (laughs) that's not good for me. Mm. You know, it's just not. Um, So we want her to trust us, that we're going to give her the best advice. We're going to put her in the best dresses. And... If she trusts you, then you know you've kind of have a leg up on her friends or her sister who might be jealous because (laughs) that's my little sister and she's getting married first. (laughs) Who knows? Mm -hmm. Who knows? But the other thing that we do, too, is we want to get to know the entourage. We want Mm. to get to know who is here and why are they poking a little fun at you? Yeah. You know, is somebody just having a bad day and we need to work on trying to make them smile? Mm -hmm. Um, Because you don't know what's going on in anybody's life or what they're bringing to that appointment. So I think for us, 
It's making it a well-rounded experience for, for every everybody. single mm. person yep. in that shop wow. and that's in that appointment. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And if mom is just upset because she's losing her baby, you know, what? I'm going to go in, I'm going to talk to mom Aww. and I'm going to let her know, you know, I've been there. I've done that. I have five kids, you know, and I, <laughs> I have an, I have one getting another one. I four have already, of them are girls. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, four four of them are girls. That's right. You know, I have another one getting married and I'm going to try to connect with mom mm. on that level. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really important. She found the dress. She's so excited. It's, it's her dress. Now what? Obviously she can't take that dress home because maybe it's all clipped in the back and stuff like that. So what are those next steps of, she said the dress, you know, what happens? So at that point we take measurements. Okay. Because we are ordering this dress from a designer. Mm. Now you can have custom made to measure, measurements taken. Um, a lot of our brides don't do that, though. Okay. Um, they choose just to go off of measurements provided by the designer. So it's a standard size. So we are trying to measure to see what is the closest measurement to mm-hmm. what particular sizes. And we all vary. But we're really good about, about what we do on our end. So we measure her and then we send the order off to the designer. And once we do that, we get confirmation, it's in production, and then we're going to sit back and we're going to wait. And sometimes it can be six months, sometimes it takes eight months, sometimes close to a year. Okay. So people don't realize, it's like whenever they're coming in and they're shopping (laughs) and they're giving us that like eight months to a year, I am really, really happy. I'm like, thank you so much. Absolutely. Um, But you mentioned something about they're not taking the dress home. You are correct. Whenever it's coming from White of Dublin, we are special ordering that Mm. dress from the designer. However, our sister store right next door is off the rack. Oh. So Emerald and Oak Bridal is off the rack. We are literally separated by a spa and it's on the ground level. And you can go in there if you have a really quick turnaround time Mm. and you do take that dress home right off the rack. Very cool. So just saying. Yeah, you're really able to offer (laughs) offer both of both worlds for sure. From custom jobs to off-the-rack dresses, all the way down to the veils and shoes, Heather and Miranda truly have thought of everything to make White of Dublin your one-stop bridal shop. They're even up to date on the latest trends and are able to offer multiple looks if a bride is looking for that reception dress. I know a big trend now in the wedding industry is switching out of your beautiful dress into a reception dress or into a shorter dress. Are you guys able to not only provide, let's say she wants a big, beautiful ball gown, are you also able to provide a reception dress or a second look dress? And what would that process look like if a bride wanted that for you guys? Absolutely. And I think we do that often enough. Honestly, I've done it twice in the last month. Um, So our bride will come in and they kind of let you know from the get, like, that they're interested in potentially having two different looks. Okay. Um, There's a couple different ways by achieving that. We have different bolero jackets or toppers that we can actually put on to a dress to give it two separate looks. So when they remove that jacket, it's almost like it's a whole different dress. Okay. Um, We have detachable sleeve options to do things like that. Um, If the bride is looking at more so of a ball gown, so lots of of poof to it, lots of shape, Mm -hmm. um, and they want to switch and have something easier for the reception, um, What I would suggest is that, you know, we find the dress that you see yourself most getting married in. You see yourself coming down the aisle in this dress. From there, we're going to kind of switch and turn to maybe a second favorite that it was like the runner up. Okay. And that's when you can kind of not pitch, but, you know, explain that maybe this could be your reception dress. Mm. And something that I always do too with my brides, a lot of brides don't realize that they may love a really long cathedral or royal length veil. Mm -hmm. Um, They never try to veil on. Why would they, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I always say, go big or go home. It's like, let's go ahead and let's put a really long veil on and see what you think. And I I would say probably 90% of our brides go with a long cathedral length or royal length veil. Um, It almost accentuates and extends the train of a dress Mm -hmm. as well. Really complements it beautifully. Um, But then, you know, other brides, once they put it on, they might say, oh, it's a little much. And if that's okay, you know, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull a shorter one then. And we're going to listen to her and then kind of go up from there. Absolutely. um, Yeah. Yeah. White of Dublin is by appointment only. So Heather recommends booking about eight to 10 months before your wedding date so that they have plenty of time to go through all the options and to make sure your dress has plenty of time to arrive. As I got ready to say yes to my dress, I had to ask Heather and Miranda what some of their favorite trends were. 
I love peak necklines and they are here. So it's almost like a smiley face. It's like a scoop, but mm. it's strapless. Um, it kind of hits us in the area where none of us really like ourselves at, which is like close to your underarms where we all kind of just have that little crease. Um, the girls are loving it. They're eating it up. Clean Classic Simple is totally here right now. Mm. Um, so it's been refreshing to see that, but also... I love that peak neckline and that's a trend that's definitely coming. I love that too. And I also like, I do love the low backs and I like okay. an interesting back. So I, and I, I enjoy the fact that you've got this now conservative front and then you turn around and it's like, whoa, you got a party in the back. <laughs> so it's super exciting and you can do so much with the back of a dress. Well, Heather and Miranda, it has been a joy to be able to talk with you, pick your guys' brains about the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful aspect of finding that perfect wedding dress. If people want to learn more about you or experience that hands-on, that personal, that wealth of knowledge that you guys offer at White of Dublin, how can they find you? Where are you guys located? Okay, we're at 23 North High Street in Dublin. Um, so we're right in Old Dublin. Right there. Um, across from Jenny's ice cream. Plug to Jenny's. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you go to our website too, it's uh, www.whitebridalboutiques.com. You can also find us if you just Google White of Dublin mm -hmm. or White Bridal Boutiques. And then our handle Instagram is at White Bridal Boutiques. And where else can they find us? Anywhere else? I think that is it. Oh, you can call us. We do have telephones. Yeah, they, they, they work as far as I know. 614-791-2600. Uh, Heather, Miranda, you clearly have a love for each one of your brides that shine through the decisions you help them make as their big day approaches. Thank you so much for joining us today to tell us all about how you help your bride's wedding dress journey feel comfortable and unique. It has been an absolute pleasure to work with the both of you. Here's the thing about wedding dresses, though. Most of them are white. And I don't know if you've ever worn something white to a party before, but it can be really hard to keep it clean. Dry cleaning is a, is a mystery. So it's a good thing that we know Greg. People think you just spray powder all over something and that's how you dry clean something. Is that not actually? No, no, I have actually <laughs> no, no it, it goes into a machine similar to what you would think of as a washing machine. And you use dry cleaning fluids, so there might be a, more than one gown in there at a time. Greg and his wife, Margaret, are the owners of Dublin Cleaners. They are a full-service dry cleaner company based in Dublin, not far from our wedding dress shop friends, actually. Dublin Cleaners has a staff of 60 highly trained professional cleaners that specialize in cleaning specific types of clothing, such as suits, blouses, and, of course, wedding dresses. Dublin Cleaners was opened in March of 1982. Dublin was a very small community at the time, and uh, it, grew, it grew from uh, becoming a city in 1987, and today it's 50,000 people. So we grew right along with it. Very, we were very fortunate to find what we found and to grow along with the city, and we started with six employees, and we now have 60. And you guys have six locations, right? Dublin Cleaners is the parent company. Then we also have New Albany Cleaners, Granville Cleaners, and Newark Cleaners. Those are both in Licking County. But there are three other locations for Dublin Cleaners, and we have 11 home delivery routes. Dublin Cleaners has been around for a long time. And in that time, like Greg said, they've grown right up alongside their city. And there's a reason for that. Greg and his team have spent years keeping up to date with the latest cleaning technologies and methods. They are even a certified member of the Association of Wedding Gown Specialists, a professional organization dedicated to the cutting edge dry cleaning and preservation techniques. One of the big things in Central Ohio in the wedding world that you guys are known for is your like wedding dress um, per preserving and the way you're able to take care of the dresses post wedding. I haven't worn my dress yet, but I'm unbelievably excited to wear it. And I, I want to still be able to honor it afterwards. So what are, so could you kind of explain some of that? Because I know that's why we have you here is because you guys are experts in it, right? Everyone is saying such positive things. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, when we started, I told Greg, if we specialize in wedding gowns, then they're going to expect 
expect we can do everything. Greg is the dry cleaner, and I do any minor repairs, and I do the preservation. I do have an assistant, but it stays in-house. Everything's done in-house. We, we do a lot of communication, and they have my personal cell number. They can reach me and so on. And we belong to the Association of Wedding Gown Specialists. Ooh. So, And we're the only company in um, Delaware, Licking, and Franklin County that belong. I've never heard of wedding dress preservation before talking to Greg and Margaret, so I had a few questions. Well, what, what a, a gown preservation is, is a clean gown in an acid-free, museum-quality packing. When we finish with the gown, we clean the gown, and then all the chemicals are extracted. We, we nicely fold it and display it in the box, the bridal chest, which is a has an oval window. And you can lift that lid, and you can look in and see your gown anytime you want to see it. The preservation method that Greg and Margaret use is highly specialized to ensure that each dress is cared for according to its own unique properties. We follow care labels, and if we don't have enough information, like we just recently had a situation, we didn't have enough information, it took us about six weeks to determine and talking to the designer and all of that. We didn't talk to the designer, but the bride did. And and uh, we, we resolved the issue the best way we could. So that's, we, we don't have to just jump right headlong into it. We want to make sure that we're doing it correct with every individual gown. I had no idea that wedding dress cleaning and care was so complicated. There are so many things that go into caring for a specific type of fabric and making sure the cleaning process doesn't ruin the stitching or any of the ornaments. Greg and his team of cleaners spend a lot of time learning how to best care for each dress, and it shows in how committed they are to their customers. We want you to bring it out on your anniversary. We want you to look at it and things like that, uh, but we also What preserves it in your home is keeping it in the proper place. And we provide you with all the information, no basements, no attics, no unheated storage spaces. And last but not least, we, all of our gowns are put into an Association of Wedding Gown Specialist logo box. What that means is that if you move out of this area and you move to say Dallas, Texas, and you open that up one of those anniversaries and you see a little yellow spot, well, that's not supposed to be there. We guarantee that won't be there. And if you've kept it in the right condition, we are ob- obligated to re-clean and re-preserve it, no cost to you. And then if you're in Dallas, you're thinking, I've got to take this back to Columbus. No, you don't. You will find the, the Wedding Gown Association member in that area and they uphold our guarantee. It sounds like this cleaning and preservation process is pretty thorough, but how soon after the wedding should we actually bring in the dress? When when should they bring them in afterwards? Is it like two weeks after? Is that okay, or is it have to be the night of? There's no real time. Like Greg says, it's never too late to clean your wedding gown. Uh, But then after the wedding, if you spilled red wine down the front of your dress, or someone else did, you're better off bringing it in sooner rather than later. We try to tell you in advance, you know, if, how, whether we can get this out or not. But, um, you know, just do your very best not not to have somebody spill something on you. <laughs> but then if they do, bring it in pretty quick. Speaking of stains, Greg was kind enough to give us some pointers to make sure that we avoid some common ones. The brides spend many hours and many dollars getting this dress and then the wedding comes along and they're beautiful, they look perfect and everything's wonderful and they go down the aisle and then they head for the reception. And that's where most of the calamities take place. The red wine, the white wine. The cake smash. No cake smash. <laughs> and, and that's what it's all about. They're supposed to do that. Are they? And then, and then they go out into the parking lot with the photographer and walk across that asphalt driveway and get tar all over the bustle and the hem of the dress. So what they really need to do is have people help them raise that dress up when they're out in the parking lot, walk to where you want to go, put it down. Because once that tar gets in there, it's very difficult, sometimes impossible to remove. 
that was something I've never thought of before, but I will absolutely be sure to be aware of it now. Even Margaret had some helpful advice that didn't just have to do with the dress. I do have uh, things to know and do before you say I do, which um, has a list of things to consider before, during, and just after the wedding. And then we also provide, if you get in touch with me, I provide the instructions for transporting the gown. When I get a call from someone, I need to know certain things. Sometimes they just want to go, how much is such and such? And I'll give them the price, and we go with that. But I also want to know what all do you need? And that's my job as um, the person, the bridal specialist who's going to help you. Matt and I felt confident that we could give my dress to Greg and Margaret for cleaning and preservation after the wedding. They even offered us to come in and tour their facilities to watch how they care for each of the dresses. But I feel like we could trust them already. I can be reached by phoning me at 614-335-9206. We have a we-, we have a website. Uh, it's DublinCleaners.com, and we are on Facebook. Bridal salons also recommend, as I said earlier, the wedding gown alteration specialists send people in. Again, none of us want to refer our brides to anybody that I don't think would do a good job. And I talk with the brides, especially if they need a, a seamstress. We don't do those those wedding gown alterations because they're very specialized. And I have a list that I can also share with people if they need that. But if I, they tell me what their gown is, I know which of the people I should probably send them to. Greg and Margaret, thank you so much for helping us understand the mysterious, because I think it is, mysterious world of dry cleaning and wedding dress preservation. I can't wait to keep my beautiful dress clean and bright for the years to come. And with that, we have reached the end of the episode. Now we've got a wedding dress and we've got a great place that's going to keep it clean. But it wouldn't be fair if I was the only one that looked great on our wedding day. (laughs) And so on our next episode, Matt and I will be talking with some tuxedo rental places right here in Columbus to help him look the absolute best when he says I do. Until then, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Bailey and thanks for listening to She Said Yes. She Said Yes is presented by White of Dublin. To learn more about how they make your wedding dress experience comfortable, personal, and all about you, visit whitebridalboutiques.com. Produced and distributed by River Radio Ministries. To find more podcasts like this one, visit riverradio.com. Make sure you follow us wherever you're listening now. And if you like what you're hearing, tell a friend so they can listen too.